Right at the beginning of the outbreak, uh, in the first one or two weeks of uh, March, it wasn't clear how extensive this would be. Nobody knew what caused the outbreak. My husband brought me to the A&E and that moment I know that something is wrong in Singapore. The whole ED emergency department was full of you know, public for screening. My temperature was 39.3, so the temperature was really raising very fast and, and high. When we realised that there was something happening, we didn't know exactly what was it. We just knew that we have a job to do and we have a team to lead. When you see something, you know what you have to do, it's one level of fear. But seeing something and you have no idea, that is very, a very deep-seated fear. This is actually likely to be a true new infection. We didn't know, therefore, how infectious it was. And so the initial efforts were to try and contain it within Tan Tok Seng, where the cases were. My symptoms were getting worse, like uh, bleeding gums, bleeding nose, bleeding ears. There's only one thought. I was just thinking whether I'll be waking up the next day because it was like, it was very bad. I was really scared at that point of time. I'm scared because when I look at my hands and my legs, because it's already half cyanotic, and it reminded me of my patient who passed on. Well, the starting of an epidemic is always the most difficult period because uh, of the uncertainty. One of the key questions when we realised that SARS had already hit us was how to deal with it. First thing that came to our mind is how to provide the healthcare workers a safe environment as well as how to protect their safety before we put them into the front line to take care of our patient. Looking at the pattern of how it spread, we thought that it was likely to be a droplet type of infection spread. Once we conclude that that was probably the most likely cause, we had to devise what would be the necessary precaution against that. Senior leadership uh, had taken a very strong move at the time to collapse the structure and make it as flat as possible so it's easy for information to be pushed out and also for decisions to be made. People need to have information. They need to know actually that we have a game plan, we know what we are doing. Senior management must actually be involved prepared to take part in the risk-taking. People are willing to work, but they need clear-cut instructions. We were not alone. Um, very quickly, the Ministry came to us to provide support, and what would have been a logistic nightmare was something that we were just provided for directly. We need a national coordinating platform. At the top of it, a ministerial committee that actually steered the major strategic decisions and helped to coordinate major policies between ministries. We made the realisation that the fever always precedes the infectivity. Now that was, I think, an internal discovery that we made, which later had its effect all around the world, and that's why you see the thermal scanners that we still see some today. After we were declared free of SARS, actually there was a great deal of work still to be done and a lot of coordination. Making sure that there were no undetected cases of SARS, continue to make sure that we were vigilant at the entry points into Singapore. We had to continue to build up our stockpiles to educate the medical professionals about the new knowledge which was being discovered about SARS. I think every outbreak will bring its own experience and every outbreak will allow us to learn a lot of lessons. Continuing what we have learned, that is to be ready at all times. If there's a press of a button, we will be there, nurses will be there, ready for the next battle. I was very touched right from the start of the SARS epidemic about how committed and dedicated my fellow colleagues were, both in the health system and outside, how everybody could come together to work towards a very important common goal, which is to contain the outbreak and its impact on the society. This is uh, something which I think is a 
very powerful testimony to the strength of uh, the Singapore health system, of the people in it, and of the resilience of our community. And I think this gives me a great deal of optimism, hope, and joy for the future.